Welcome back to another arcade fix. As you can see, we're back with the heavy barrel. We're out in the garage. And now that we got the monitor all straight, it's time to take a look at these joysticks. Now, these are Data East rotary joysticks. And these are kind of, in a way, unique, but they're not. Uh, there are quite a few games that use this type of uh, rotary joystick. And this, this particular one, the Data East, is a, well, I always pronounce it WICO, W-I-C-O. If you look at it, you would think that it was pronounced WICO. But I noticed a lot of people also call it WICO. But if you look at more videos online, a lot of people call it WICO. So which is it? WICO, WICO. There's only one way to find out. You have to go straight to the company itself. Here's a little clip of the advertisement. Uh, I'll see if I can't put it in there without getting a copyright strike. Wico, the only authentic arcade joysticks. The most durable, the most accurate, the fastest controls money can buy. I've been practicing. Yeah. It's wacko over Wico. Oh. Okay, so as you can see, it's pronounced Wico. Go figure. Uh, anyway, these Data East joysticks are Witco eight-way rotary joysticks, and these are made by Witco. So uh, they also uh, have SNK and ROM Star games, which use an, another type which is interchangeable with this, but instead of having leaf switches for the main controls, uh, it has uh, micro switches. But these use leaf switches. Okay, so let's go ahead and coin up a game and let's test them out because I did notice when, when I was working on the monitor, we did a little bit of gameplay, but not too much. Uh, we did have a, a problem with both of the joysticks uh, also, be before we do that, just some of the games that, that use these type joysticks are, of course, Heavy Barrel, which this was in 1987, Data East game, Bermuda Triangle, which was an S&K game in 1987, and I think I have a Bermuda Triangle board here somewhere. I might be wrong, but uh, I might try to look it up and see. Um, if so, it would fit in this cabinet, I'm sure. Um, a game called Downtown, which was a ROM Star game in 1989. Gundomania, which is another Data East game, 1987. Guerrilla War, SNK game in 1987. Aikai Warriors. SNK game in 1986. Victory Road, which was another SNK game in 1986. SAR Search and Rescue, which was an SNK game 1989 to 1990. Time Soldiers, Romstar game 1987. And TNK 3, I guess that means Tank 3. 1985, an SNK game. Now there are some horizontal games that also use these joysticks, and there's probably a few others in there that uh, I probably missed in my little short little research I did. So okay, let's go ahead and see if we can't test these joysticks. So let me put a, a couple credits. All right, we had a little technical difficulty there. The coin door credit switch is hooked up to only both switches are hooked up to one uh, credit coin credit two and it the connector the wire had pulled out of the jammer harness so what I had to do was take the other coin wire and that wouldn't be used and just transfer it over to the the other wire so now we should have coins let's coin up there we go. 
<laughs> have to do them quick changes sometimes. All right. So let's go ahead and do both players. And we're going to check the joystick on both of them. I think we can skip this. Okay. Player one. We don't have forward. We have back. Right, left. A while ago I had forward. It rotates, but it's stiff. Real stiff. There we go. Now we got forward. Okay. All right, let's try player two. Same thing. We don't have forward unless we jam it forward hard. I have left, right, back. This one rotates fine. I believe it has an eight position rotate. All right now, that, that one's not rotating right. It was earlier. So we have multiple problems with these joysticks. Okay. Position is straight up on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this one is rotating right. It's just stiff. This one here is jumping it doesn't have straight forward right now. It did. There we go. Now we got straight forward. So that just means the contacts are dirty in the little, uh, I guess it's like a wafer switch that's at the end of the joystick that turns, that chooses the positions. So yeah. All right, so we're going to have to clean the joystick. Now these are, uh, like I say, Whitco. I might mess up and say Waco, but I'm, I'm going to try my best not to, since we now know that it's Whitco instead of Waco. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and uh, these are leaf switch for the forward and back, right and left. Now, leaf switches are supposed to be self-cleaning. If I was to play this enough, it might straighten up and clean itself. But... Uh, Okay, player one is over. Uh, but we're going to help it out some. So let me show you how I deal with it. I'm sure it's plenty of ways to deal with it. But uh, let's go ahead and I'll pull the control panel open and situate the cameras and let's get started to clean these up. All right, first thing I'm going to do is the, the shaft that run through the center shaft is a little stiff. The more I move it, the, the better it gets. So I'm going to put just a little drop of PB Blast to start with. Just a little bit. I'm going to turn the, the can down here. It's got an adjustment where you can adjust how much comes out. And it's got, of course, the straw. So hoping I'm not going to make a mess. So I'm going to get under here. And see if I can't see if anything comes out. Okay, and that all the way that position, it, it won't come out at all. Boy, that really comes out. All right, let's see if we can get a little drop in there. Nothing coming out. Alright, let's try this again. I'm going to wind up making a mess, I know. Okay. And we'll just work that in. I don't imagine this is good for the garment, grommet in there.
but that should be all we need for that. Might come back and, and clean this out if it's a lot. I might have to take the joysticks apart. Now these joysticks are different than the uh, SNK joysticks. These are supposed to have a set screw right in the side right here. You take that set screw loose and you can pull the knob off. The SNK ones you have to take this center cap out. I don't think this, there's no center cap on these. And uh, you have to have a little tool where you push up on the, the bottom to release the little, two little tabs that will pull this center piece out. But like I say, these are the Whitco, and these have a set screw that holds the knobs onto the shaft. So it's, it's loosened up real good. When I first uh, got this game, this one here, you couldn't even turn it. It was, it was actually, it seemed like it was spinning on the uh, uh, set screw. So I don't know if the set screw goes on a round shaft or not. We might take that one of them off and see what it looks like. But I think we got that part down. Okay. Now... Let me open it up and get situated again, and we'll go about looking at the uh, leaf switches and the rotary uh, switch. It's not an encoder because this is an analog stick. The, uh, well, I'll show you. Okay, this can be very difficult to, to get here, but I'm going to see what I can do here. Um, these Whitco rotary joysticks are essentially just like the standard uh, Whitco leaf switch joystick. It has the same base, uses the same rubber garment. Uh, the only difference is the shaft and the bracket for the, uh, the little rotary switch right here. This is a little rotary switch. And it's on the end of the shaft and when you turn the knob you can see it rotate. And you can see all the solder joints on the board here and of course it's got the connector here which has a multitude of wires going to it. Let's see it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13 wires. So um, these are, are basically a bunch of switches on, on this. Uh, it's a rotary switch is what it is. It's not an encoder wheel. It's not digital. Uh, like a, the HAP 360 joystick, I think that's got an encoder wheel which was uh, electronically digital. This is not digital. This is analog. This is nothing more than a rotary switch. Like you would have a switch on a, a multimeter that you uh, turn on the multimeter for the different range settings. Old school meter. Um, so that's basically all this is. And I do believe you can get replacements for these um, either in DigiKey or, or one of those other places. Somebody actually found what looks like an identical replacement for these. Whether it is or not, I don't know, but you do a Google search and find out if you do need these. Uh, I'm not sure if they come apart to clean them. Um, like I say, I've never messed with them. If anybody has any experience with these Whitco Data East rotary joysticks, let me know in the comments. How do you clean the rotary switch here? I don't see a hole in it anywhere, but I'd have to take one off uh, to really be able to look at it all the way around. And uh, it may have a little hole in it like a, a pot or volume control where you can spray a little deoxid in it. Or you may be able to take them apart. I don't know, but I would imagine to take them apart, you would have to desolder it off that board. So it's probably a sealed unit. So in that case, uh, 
just using it ought, ought to clean it up if we can't get any deoxidant in it. Now, as far as the leaf switches, a lot of people are, uh, don't really know how to, to clean leaf switches. I know a lot of us have been in the hobby for a long time, should know how to do it. And I'm not an expert on it, but I do know that there are different types of leaf switches. Now, these are joystick leaf switches, which are basically uh, low current, low voltage uh, for electronic, it's electronic switch is what it is. And the contacts, you got two contacts on the leaf switch. And when you pull the lever, it makes contact with the two contacts. And of course you got your your two wires, your ground and your signal wire. And when they make contact, well that's how the game knows all right, you have that control input. Okay, those little contacts, you think of them as points. But unlike the points in an ignition system in a car, which has high voltage across them, these are low voltage. So these, in order to keep them from getting dirty, they're usually either gold plated or silver plated. Now you might have some cheaper ones that might be tin plated, I don't know. But I suspect that they're all either, the tip is either gold plated or silver plated. So when you clean them, you don't want to uh, sand off or file off that coating. Because if you do, you go down to the base metal, whatever they're made out of, which might be brass or copper uh, or bronze or whatever, um, which will still conduct, but without that gold and silver coating on it, or whatever kind of coating they have on them, they will corrode up in a, if you're in a real humid environment, um, and especially out in like a garage out here where it's out right now, where it's oftentimes not climate controlled and you got a lot of humidity in the air. All right, gold and silver, of course silver will tarnish. Gold, I guess, I don't know if gold tarnishes or not. I guess it does because you have to clean gold and silver. If you take your jewelry to a jewelry store, people clean it. I don't have any because I'm not a person who wears jewelry. So I've never had to clean any, but I, I know that people do clean them. They usually clean them in ultrasonic cleaners and what this, that, and the other. But anyway, to get back to on point, you don't want to use sandpaper. You don't want to use a nail file. Uh, you don't want to use anything that's abrasive. What you do want to use is, and I don't have one as a business card, but I do have some card stock, which is just regular card stock. Uh, I keep to, you know, you can make greeting cards with it. And it's, it's basically, it's a little bit thinner than a, a business card maybe, but it's thicker than normal paper. And you can fold it over and double it up to make it even thicker. And you don't even have to put anything on it. Uh, all you do is stick it between the contacts and because of, it's not a whole lot of space in here, I cut some up into smaller strips. So you just put it in there and you can take your finger and hold pressure on it to close the contacts together and just pull it. And don't know if you can see it, but might be washing out in the camera a little bit. Let me see if I can get it on this one. I get the light just right, maybe you can see it. But, uh, yeah, you can see the, the little mark there, which cleaned the dirt off of it. So, that's all you need to do, is put a little card stock paper. Some people even use dollar bills. Now, what you can also do, if you want to, 
You can take some deoxit and just spray it on the paper and soak the paper. And then you can put that in there and do the same thing. And that'll clean the dirt off of them. And like I say, it's a little hard getting to them with this rotary switch on here. Normal joystick wouldn't have this on here. These two are easy. The other ones are going to be a little harder. These are probably the dirtiest ones because nobody ever cleaned them because they're hard to get to. Look at all that dirt that's coming off of them. They get another piece of paper. Put a little more deoxid on it. And let's see if I can find the other one over here. Make sure I get it in between the contacts. I don't know if we're going to get any deoxid in this rotary control, but I'm going to spray a little bit on there anyway. Maybe something will work its way in there. Now this joystick, we had problems with it going forward. So that would be the one down in the bottom. So that's the hard one to get to. So that's probably why we were having trouble with that. Because nobody ever gets down there to clean it. So let's try that one again. Yeah. Can't get it doubled up. Let me get a smaller strip here maybe. Yeah, that one's hard to get to. Yeah, I can't get to it from that side. I get it to it from this side. I know you probably ain't seeing anything. Okay. All right. Well, before I do the other one, let's go ahead and... Uh, See if we got any doing any good with this one. Well, I'll go ahead and do the other one off camera. And I'll come back and we'll find out whether we did any good. All right, there's one more thing I wanted to add about cleaning leaf switches on uh, different types of leaf switches. If, if you go to clean your leaf switches and you use a business card or a piece of card stock, and with a little deoxid on it, like I clean these with. Uh, and if that doesn't work, and you're still having uh, problems, it may be that somebody has already gone and used a file or sandpaper on the leaf switches and has al already removed the silver or gold plating on the contacts. If that's the case, then you may have uh, no other option but to go ahead and just 
sand them with some sandpaper um, or a, 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 one of those thin nail files uh, because somebody has already ruined the, the leaf switch. And you can go ahead and, and sand them that way and get some use out of them, but you're going to have to continuously uh, clean them because I don't think they'll stay clean unless you really play the game a lot. Uh, but another method, instead of using, if, if you need something a little more aggressive, but you, you don't want to go to the uh, emery board file or sandpaper or whatever, you can get what they call a burnishing tool. And this is a GC burnishing tool. They have different ones and different uh, amount of, uh, I guess, abrasiveness. But these are almost like they're smooth. It does, it's not a whole lot of abrasion to them. But they do have a slight little abrasion. Real super, super fine uh, abrasion. And they are metal. And these are designed to clean the contacts on a, um, on a leaf switch. And all you, all you need to do is just put a little drop of deoxid cover it on both sides and do the same thing like you do with the paper or the business card. Just put it in between. It's almost like a point file. Put it in between, push them together a little bit, and just pull it back and forth and it'll clean the contacts. So that's another method. Now, there are other leaf switches like in electromechanical pinball machines. A lot of the early Bally and um, Stern games and uh, goblet games, have you pronounced that? That's another one of those things. Anyway, galab, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the flipper buttons especially, but also pop bumper uh, switches. Uh, they're leaf switches, but they are a higher voltage and a higher amperage leaf switch. They usually have, I, I think it's tungsten uh, contacts and tungsten is a, a very um, hard metal that withstands a, you know, a lot of current and heat and, and whatever. If you ever worked on an electromechanical or an early uh, pinball machine and watched the flipper uh, contacts, you can actually see sparks between the contacts. And they will get dirty and they do need filing. So on those type of uh, leaf switches, you will have to use a file, point file, burnishing tool, maybe with a little bit uh, more aggressive uh, uh, you know, uh, grit, I guess you would, would call it, or just a, a regular uh, nail file or sandpaper or anything like that. So you, that's the only time you use something that aggressive is on those uh, high current, um, high voltage type switches like in pinball machines, especially the old electromechanical. Um, but anything that is electric and low voltage, you want to stick with the, the paper, the business card, the oxid, and uh, last resort, a burnishing tool and if that don't do it then somebody has already sanded the uh, contacts and you'll probably have to go ahead and continue sanding them unless you replace the leaf switch and these leaf switches are starting to get hard to find especially for the Whitco joysticks uh, I don't even know if you can actually find any new old stock anymore if anybody they make some reproductions but I'm not 100% sure they're the same exact uh, and same quality. I've, I've never bought any, so I've never had to rebuild one. So, uh, But anyway, these joysticks are good to go for now. Now, if somebody wants to put this game in a cabinet and all, they'll probably want to go through these rotary joysticks and uh, take them apart. The shafts are a little rusty down here, so they'll probably want to clean those up. and. Uh, check out the leaf switches and see what kind of condition they're in and maybe replace some of them but for the time being they're good to go so just wanted to add that into it 
Okay, well, the joystick cleaning seems to work fine. I uh, now have full control on both player one and player two. So the only one thing left to do is uh, go ahead and let's uh, play a little bit of heavy barrel. Like I say, I've never really played it a whole lot, just doing some a few tests out here. So uh, let me give it a try and see if I like it. So go ahead and put some credits here. <laughs> And since the trying to stay out of the way of the cameras, I'm going to use uh, player number two, which is more central to the uh, control panel here. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a one player game on player two. And let's see what I can uh, do with this game. I can tell you I'm not going to be very good at it. Uh, it's going to take a while to get used to this rotary joystick. Uh, but we'll give it a try. Alright, i got full control back, forward, right and left. Got my machine gun. i got my grenades. So far I haven't used the rotary yet because I'm just trying to get a feel for the game. This is hard. I get to try again. Man. Flamethrower, huh? Okay, we must be going this way. Like I say, it's going to take a little while to get the hang of it, but definitely different. Ah. I like the power-ups. That's a neat one right there. Ah. Oh. Still get killed, though. Two. Ah. Oh. I guess the object is to try to get the pieces to your super gun up there, or whatever they call it. Okay, 
this another level? Like I say, I've never played this game, so. Okay, must have been some type of an elevator. Hmm, what are you supposed to do here? Okay. Rotary aspect can help out, but it can also get you in trouble if you're not real good with it. Ah, boy. What the heck was that? And how do you get off of this? Oh, right here, I guess. Yeah. This is why they put a continue on it. This, this is one of them quarter eaters. Three. have to try to dodge the fire and just rotate your man around and shoot everybody. But see, in some positions, you, you can't aim at them. You have to do a combination of moving in the right position to get it to line up. Because it's, it's not, the fire is only in certain directions. Get out of there. Man. I 
That's a matter of credits. They just swarm all over you. do now. Alright, what do you do? I'm stuck? Hey, I don't get it. Okay, somebody's going to have to tell me what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Is the game working right? What am I supposed to do? Okay. There's a switch over here, do it. Okay, well, I, I'm lost. Somebody's gonna have to tell me what, what's going on here. I just don't know. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm afraid that this just isn't my type of game. Let me uh, start a player one, put player one in here and see what happens. Is he stuck too? Okay, somebody's... I don't get it. Okay. I give up. Alrighty. Well, like I say, I don't think Heavy Barrel is my type of game. It's fun, but uh, no, I think I'll pass on it. So, I got to decide what I'm going to do. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and, and pull the board and the wiring harness, take the control, the joysticks out of the uh, control panel, and uh, sell it as a kit. I got the bezel, I got the marquee, um, but. I'm going to need the control panel, unless, unless I can find another control panel uh, for this particular cabinet. But then the control panel won't do anybody else any good unless they have this cabinet. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments what, what you would do. 
but I'm definitely, I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm not interested in this game. Sorry, heavy barrel fans. Maybe I'll see if I got that uh, Bermuda Triangle game and see if it is the, the one that uses these joysticks. And we'll plug that in in a video and see if that works. But I don't even know for sure I got it. I'm just going off of memory. I think I have one, but uh, like I say, I don't know. I have to look it up. All right, until then, this has just been another arcade fix. We fixed the joysticks. The joysticks are working now, so the game is at least playable until you get to this level. Like I say, I don't understand what's going on. I, I don't see... I don't see any way of getting out of this. I really don't. There must be some secret to me, so, uh, to it. So if anybody knows the secret, let me know. <laughs> or maybe this board just ain't working right. Or maybe I found a bug in the, in the game. I'm assuming this is some type of an elevator, uh, but there's no other controls. All you got is fire and grenades, and you can rotate and you can move. I don't see no, nothing else to do. Okay, that's it. Let me know in the comments, and uh, let me know what you would do with this cabinet. I got an idea, and I'm kind of already thinking and, and working on it. Um, so anyway, it's just been another arcade fix. Have you had your arcade fix today?